is Mark. I'm the president of Fencing Club. I'm Sean, current instructor of the Fencing Club. And today we're going to be getting over the basic attacks of Saber. So to start off, let's talk about the target area. So the target area in Saber Fighting is anywhere from your waist up, not including your hands. That includes your wrist, your arm, your head, and your torso. Again, your wrist, arm, head, and torso. It does not include your leg, and it does not include your hands. So the first of two attacks in Saber is called the cut, where, or flick, where you swing the blade on your opponent. This is done primarily for holding the blade with your thumb and forefinger, and then loosely hanging the other three fingers. This is so that you have all the stability you need in this hand, and it acts as a pivot point. So as you clench your fist, and these other fingers curl in, it causes a casting motion where the blade moves forward. As you do this squeeze, you're also going to move your arm forward, and then going to lean your body forward, and then lunge, in that order. It's going to be hand, arm, body, lunge. Altogether, this kind of looks like you're casting a fishing rod. Although you're not going to do a big swing, because that would leave you open, you do a small swing. The area in which you attack is your basic wrist mobility, starting from about here to about here. It is possible to do swings like these, but they're very situational and not something I would open with. If you are attacking your opponent, you can swing and hit the arm, or the head, or sometimes the torso, although it's rather difficult. If I was to cut from the top, you want to go for the quickest target area, or the closest target area, which would be the head. If his sword is extended, I can choose to go for the head. I could also choose to go for the arm, which is closer. Each has their own benefits. The arm might be a little bit easier to get. The head is a bit more risky, but the head is going to be staying in the same spot where the wrist is probably going to be defended rather well. Next, we're going to talk about the thrusts. Absolutely. So the second attack you can do in saber fighting is called thrust. Now, like Mark was saying before, it'll follow a sort of similar pattern where, although instead of flicking the blade forward, you're going to have the blade in position starting from up here all the way down here. And you're going to, like the name would suggest, thrust forward. This is the most direct attack you can do, and uh, it is often a good uh, is used to occupy an opponent's blade you can get around that and stab them. Uh, the downsides of it, however, is that it's easy to disengage and it is a slow attack. So you can see it coming for a while off and be able to deflect it like such. And to start with some of the uh, pros of cutting, um, to counter the pros of thrusting, there is a very quick attack. It is very unpredictable. I can strike many of the different areas out of the arm, the torso, or the head, and it's very difficult for your opponent to know exactly where. You have a very wide range you can attack. Um, the weakness is that it is uh, easily deflected by passive defense. If Sean was to have his sword in a basic guard and I was to attack from that position, it would be very difficult for me to get by because his sword's in the way, right? So I then have to work around this shield that he has. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching.